One day after graduating from high school, Elvis Presley noticed a good-looking girl in church, Dixie Locke, and she noticed him. But getting the shy boy to ask her out took some work. Elvis and I, we had noticed each other at church, but neither one of us were quite bold enough to just go up to the other and say hello or, you know, can we get together or whatever, which in my day that was unheard of that a girl, I mean, we would not have thought about asking him out or anything about that really. Girls today are so much bolder, aren't they, than we were, but um, some of my girlfriends and I had, uh, we always went skating on a Friday or Saturday night at Rainbow, and we had kind of cooked up this plot to, you know, involve him in it uh, without him knowing that it was a plot, but um, we made sure that he was in earshot when we were talking and we were like, had our back to him, but we were talking loud enough that he could hear us that we were all going skating that Friday night. And um, I just felt like if he heard us and if he was interested that he'd be there. And so when we got there that Friday night, he came in. So of course I just knew that he came because of me. <laughs> and uh, so when I saw him, I went over and skated over to him. He had his skates on, but he could not skate, but uh, he had his skates on, and I skated over to him and introduced myself to him. And he said, oh, well, I know who you are, you know. So we just kind of, I don't think I got back out on the skate floor the rest of the night. We just sat and talked. And uh, when we got uh, ready, the session was over, he asked if he could take me home that night. In fact, <laughs> I, I kind of got in a little trouble about that because we had a curfew at my house. I was supposed to be home at 1030. You know, I knew he had to take me home that night because I wanted to spend some more time with him. And um, I said to him, well, I'll have to call and ask my parents if I can, you know, stay. And I'll say that I'm going to stay for the late session, which would give us another two hours. And um, he said, okay. And it was so crazy. We went into the dining area for me to use the phone, and we didn't even have a telephone at our house. Uh, and I pretended to call my mother and uh, tell her, you know, and he's standing outside the, by the phone booth listening to me, and, and I'm telling her, you know, that, you know, we're having such a good time, and all my girlfriends are there, and um, I didn't mention him, and, um, you know, that we'd like to stay for the late session, and I acted like she was saying, okay, will you do all this? And I was saying, okay, mother, and... And I wasn't even talking with anybody on the phone, but I just put on a real good show so he would think it would be okay for me to be later. And um, and in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, I'm going to get killed when I get home. <laughs> but uh, nevertheless, that's what I did. And uh, my girlfriends went on home on the bus like they were supposed to. And um, we, uh, we left as soon as the first session was over and went to one of the drive-in restaurants, got something to eat and sat in the parking lot and talked until time for me to get home. And uh, I did confess that to my mother much later than that, but um, uh, when I got home that night, I had to, of course, my, my mother was up waiting for me to get in and I had to tell her the whole story. So I was in a little trouble about that the rest of the week. It was just, uh, it was a good time and just didn't want it to end by going home at 10 o'clock. <laughs>